Hey everyone, welcome to yet another episode of Coffee Time with Mr. Yin, with your host Mr. Yin, and today we're having protein shake. Tastes great. So today I got an interesting episode for you guys. We're going to be talking about this new book review called Machine Learning on Kubernetes. So first things first, for those of you who haven't used Kubernetes before, it's essentially a practical way of building open source machine learning libraries. So on a high level, it's actually not that hard to understand what the thing is doing. It kind of is just one way for you to write a package. Now this book is in collaboration with a pack publisher, and I've had a tremendous amount of luck to be able to review this book and write a comment about it. So the first thing I look at the book is really about its authors. There are two authors for this book, Masood and Brigoli. Both of them work for Red Hat, and Masood is a principal architect at Red Hat, and he actually has 20 years of experience. The second author, Brigoli, is an associate principal architect, and he has 18 years of experience. So right off the bat, I think these two authors can bring us a lot of industry experience, and this entire book is jam-packed with information culminated from both of these authors. Me personally, I don't know who they are. I only read this book to get to know them. And I think this book is of great value for you guys if you want to get an understanding of how things work in the industry. So that's the introduction of this episode of what we're doing here. And I just want to let you guys know that me personally, by all means, I'm not an expert in Kubernetes. I think perhaps my previous job used a little bit of Kubernetes and I get to touch a couple of different modules built using Kubernetes. So we're talking about a little bit of hands-on experience and myself as well. When I'm reading this book, of course, I consider myself a beginner. So with all that being said, I think it's a great perspective and angle that I coming from a place where I know a little bit about Kubernetes, but not a whole lot. So hopefully this review, I'm able to provide some of the feedback in just plain English of how I feel about this book, pros and cons, and so on and so forth. So the first thing I like about this book is that the first chapter is actually talking about the challenges and the pain spots and the roadblocks of deploying a machine learning library or some sort of machine learning pipeline. Because so far, all of the, all the books that I read and I review, most authors are eager to jump into the story and trying to sell the book and trying to give us what they want to teach us. Where these two authors, where the authors of this book actually come from a slightly different angle because they have industry experience, because they know how things work and what are some of the pain spots. Hey, why don't we start with that, right? So I really appreciate that in the beginning, the book really starts with where things are coming from and source of the problem and exactly what is the pain spots that people have had. And believe me, after I read the first chapter, it's like reading a diary of my job. So it really makes me feel better because if somebody else has had the same problem, then I'm not alone in this, right? But in addition to my feelings, I think it's important to lay out the pain spots and the roadblocks because the audience deserves to know where to plug in the solutions that you proposed, right? If you don't tell us what the pain spots are, then the audience will not know that. I think this book is very well written right from the beginning. You ease your way in and it tells you exactly what went wrong. So the next thing that this book is talking about is the evolution of how people deploy machine learning pipelines. So uh, you might have heard of this term called ML ops. So what that means is ML operations. So really what we're talking about is each and particular building block of ML ops. So you're going to start with cleaning the data, processing the data, and then maybe you get some sort of understanding, perhaps some prior knowledge, and you build the features. And once you have features, you define a target, you build a model. So once you have a model, then whatever is left is hyperparameter tuning, evaluation, and then once you're happy with those, you can probably get it deployed. So this entire pipeline is well known, and I really enjoy the fact that all of these chapters in this book are tied up to each and every building block of this entire pipeline. So it makes my life easier when I'm reading a book considering I've only used Kubernetes for 
perhaps once or twice in my life. And I feel like these callbacks resonate with me so I know where things are coming from, which is super important and helps me keep track when I'm reading this book. So back to ML Ops, right? We have this entire pipeline, we know where things go, but there's something trivial and evolutionary in between these steps. 20, 30 years ago, people really rely on handcraft features. So what that means is it really requires some sort of subject matter experts on a team to tell us where things go, what are the features, what do you want to predict, and so on and so forth. Because if you don't really know what the features are, and you don't know what you're trying to predict, you don't have a model. If you don't have a model, then forget about the machine learning pipeline, right? The concept of ML ops falls apart. So that's what's happening about 20, 30 years ago. Now, based on the recent 20, 30 years of development, people have moved away from handcraft features. So one big thing that I teach my students when we're doing neural network topic, this whole thing actually falls under this realm called a representation learning. And the concept of representation learning is to deviate a little bit from 20, 30 years ago where we have to trust industry experts to tell us what the important features are. In representation learning, we're able to construct all these features that are internal representation of the data itself. So we no longer need handcrafted features. I think this is going to be the important part in ML Ops and really warms my heart that I see these languages written in this book as well. So I'm not alone, right? If I realize it and, I've, if, and if I've seen it, then chances are somebody else also seen it before. And this book provides that extra evidence that this has happened. So the entire book, when they are trying to introduce each and every building block of Kubernetes and how to deploy your ML projects on Kubernetes, the chapters are tied up to this entire pipeline. So in other words, this book is really following trend of ML ops and the evolutionary advancement. If not, they're leading it, right? So I think it's a great value added to the community if people come from the perspective that's not just from school or theory, but also from industry perspective and how things are done. This book does that job for you. So now let's talk a little bit about Kubernetes. Since I'm not an expert, I'm just going to talk about what I feel and where I'm coming from and my review of this book. So first things first is Kubernetes is cloud agnostic. And I particularly like this word and I've actually never seen this word elsewhere even though we've been doing this almost nearly every day in my job. And I really appreciate because what that means is I don't have to limit myself with one laptop, right? This thing is deployed on the cloud what is the point of using one laptop? I can switch laptop, I can go wherever I want. As long as I have internet, I can get my job done. So right off the bat, this concept cloud agnostic is something that I really enjoy. And thank God that Kubernetes is with that, right? If Kubernetes is against that and Kubernetes has only been working locally, then we have a problem, okay? Of course, that's not the case because Kubernetes has been existing in the industry for so many years and so many people have used that before. And my previous job is actually multi-region. So we have thousands of branches in the United States, thousands of branches in Europe. What that means is you're not gonna be working locally. You're gonna be working together, you're gonna collaborate with your team, and chances are your teammates are coming from another country. So of course, the capacity to deploy packages on a cloud is definitely one of the strengths that Kubernetes has. And it's fortunate that this book went into depth and detail and went into depth and detailed description of how that looked like, both from engineering perspective to how to build a package and also from practical and industry experts perspective of how things work across the board in the industry. And one last thing I want to mention, which actually in the book is optional, but I like optional things, so I'm going to say it. But this particular point really resonates with me. So one thing about deploying ML Ops system, uh, specifically when it comes to using Kubernetes, is it is actually on a virtual machine or that it has the capability of deploying it on a virtual machine, which me personally, I really enjoy, right? And the reason I say that is because everybody uses computer differently. I've had the fortune to use both Windows and Mac system. So for me, I don't really have a preference. 
But I have other teammates that only work in Mac or they only work in Windows. And if I just pick a side, then that makes our job a little bit difficult to work with, right? So of course, I try to do things both ways and just to make myself a little bit flexible when it comes to this kind of stuff. So you can see how in the industry, sometimes when people changes their laptop, when people have a different preference, it brings up a little bit of roadblocks to pass along the work, right? You're gonna have to go from one system to the other. And who knows, right? Some libraries, they work, some libraries, they don't. So that's one of the pain spots that I personally had in my job before. It's really interesting that in this book, the authors also mention some of that, which is to deploy packages on virtual machine. So virtual machine kind of just acts like a unique disk that you created that is somehow remote. It's not something that's tied up to your own laptop, right? If I'm a Windows system, of course, I can create a virtual machine that's in the Linux system. And if somebody is using MacBook, they can, of course, create a virtual machine that's Windows system and so on and so forth, right? You go back and forth. So I think it's important to mention this in the entire ML ops world. And that's extremely important because you want to have the flexibility of going to different employees, going to different teammates, and just be able to take their work and start working, right? If you're going to have to spend one day to install some new Windows system or some new Linux system, then that's a waste of time. Now imagine you're doing this 20 times a day, right? So I really enjoy the fact that the authors mentioned about this part in their book, that Kubernetes can be deployed on a virtual machine. So with that being said, there are 11 chapters about this book. I think most of the chapters in the end, it just walk you through each and every building block of how to build a machine and how to write the code and how to deploy. So I'm not gonna bore all you guys with that. All those valuable information are in the book. Me personally, I think overall the feedback is positive. I really enjoy reading this book myself and I recommend all you guys to read it through. If you're coming from an industry perspective, you wanna get a little bit of more taste of how things work and how things are deployed using Kubernetes, please read this book. If you're from school and you're going into a job interview or you're starting a new job that people are using Kubernetes, then this book is definitely for you. It will walk you through all of the building blocks and I think it's extremely valuable information. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Give a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.